everyone so this is the tan ready fifth grade math practice test question number one in this little picture here with the oldest calculator that you'd get free to bank ever marked out means that this is a no calculator section so the question says what is three and one eighth plus three fourths into your answer in the space provided so we're just going to add them together I know we're going to add in case you haven't quite woken up to figure that out yet because da -da -da, there's a plus sign right there so when I think about adding mixed numbers, which is what 3 and 1 eighth is, because it's a mixture of a whole number and a fraction, so it's a mixed number, and a fraction, there are a few ways that I can go about doing it. Now, one of the ways that you might choose is to convert this 3 and 1 eighth into an improper fraction, and we may do that um, in a second, but first I'm going to think of it in the same way I would think about money. If I had $3.10 and then even though one eighth is not ten cents, I get that. Just don't overthink it. And then I had some change, so three fourths, maybe seventy five cents. The first thing that I would do is look to see how I could combine dollars and then coins. So I would look at paper money first and combine that, look at coins first, and if there's any overlap, I would make adjustments as far as that's concerned. So what I mean here is if I have the three here and with the three fourths, of course there's nothing, it would be zero is the whole number and three-fourths is the fraction so I really have three plus zero so I'd make that three that's the bill part like the cash I would have three uh, and then I would add the fractions together so one-eighth plus three-fourths now the problem is this does not match this that's a big issue the reason that that's a big issue is because I have to have a common denominator so if I had say I had a circle here don't judge me on this drawing. It's terrible. I know. I know it's not even a circle. Whatever. And I have three-fourths. But then on the other one, again, I'm no artist, obviously. I have this piece filled in, and I'm like, all right, add them up. It's a little complicated, but if I start making some slight adjustments and turn this one, and I did a better job of shading them, I could really start to see that if I took this and put it over here, I'd end up with 7 eighths, because it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, that's what it looks like visually, so before I can do that mathematically or numerically I need to have a common denominator so the easy move here is to look to see if the smaller number can be multiplied by something and give you the larger of the two numbers so 4 is a smaller number hopefully you knew that part um, so I know that 2 fours gives me 8 so if I can say that 4 times 2 is equal to 8 and then 3 times 2 is equal to 6 because if you remember my drawing down here when I had three fours I when I broke it into eights all of a sudden six of them were filled in so I need to do that first so I'm gonna do that over here and just leave it times two and really the times two comes from me trying to think okay what can I turn what can I multiply four by to get eight and is that even possible and it is here so I get six eights so this question changes a little bit Move out of the way, three fourths. I'm putting your cousin six eighths in here. Or I guess it'd be your clone. And then I can, because the circle itself isn't going to change, so I can keep the denominator here. The number of parts is still eight. And then I just do a little bit of addition one plus six, seven eighths. So these are my paper money connections. This is my change. So I just bring it back together. So in my pocket, I have three and seven eighths. Now, if you hate that method, you want to do the other way, or one of a bunch of other ways, I can convert the three eighths, or three and one eighths into an improper fraction. How do I do that? Well, an improper fraction means that the number in the numerator is bigger than the denominator. I will do a multiply here, and then I will do an add here. Put a little box out there, I always do that. Eight times three is twenty-four, and then Plus 1 is 25, so 25 eighths. 25 eighths plus 
And again, I'm going to skip a step here because we already converted 3 fourths into 6 eighths. And I explained why. I'm not going to bother you with it again. And then it would be 6, 25 plus 6 gives me 31. A little 8 if I do 8 times 2, it's 16. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times 4 is 32, so that's too much. So I do 8 times 3. And then 31 minus 24. This comes from the 8 times 3. Gives you 7. And I end up with 3 and 7 eighths. So choose your own adventure. Whatever way that you want to do it is fine by me or any other way that you can get to the correct answer consistently. And uh, you'll be fine. So then in your space provided, you'll get an answer sheet. You'll just write in 3 and 7 eighths and depending on whether we ever go to computers or not, maybe you'll type it in. Who knows? The future is full of possibilities, but that's it. Well, there was a little, hopefully a little break in the, the conversation there. I'm back. I forgot that I wanted to cover one other concept in this before I move on. Um, and that concept is the idea of 3 and 1 eighths really being, if I look at, if I'm breaking things into eighths, I have 1 eighth. But then I have three, and like my circle from before, where I would do this, and then I would do this. This is a one whole, but it means I have eight parts out of eight. So another th way to go about this is saying eight out of eight, plus eight out of eight, plus eight out of eight. And this is the one, two, and three that exist right here. So since I'm adding the 1 eighth to that also, and we already talked about the whole 3 fourths thing being 6 eighths, I can go ahead and do this. And then I have my common denominator there, and I'm just going to pull an, eighth out, an 8 out. Sheesh, I can't talk. And then I have 8 plus 8, which is 16, plus 8 more, which is 24, 25, and then 31. So I get 31 eighths. And there's a couple ways I can go about adjusting to this. It doesn't tell you anything about you can't you have to have a mixed number, so that's not a requirement. So I could just leave it as thirty one over eight if I want. Or like we did in the other, I could say, well, eight times three is twenty four, and eight times four is thirty two, which is too much, and I'd have seven left over, so I could also write three and seven eighths. So not a huge requirement, but just a, con a conceptual idea that I wanted to put out there. That way you have an awareness that that exists, and you may have heard of it in class, and I don't want you not cover it.